Welcome to Vintage Hollywood Archive. What you do every day in life practically becomes part of you, but I'm not sure if the same would be said of the movie actors and their off-camera life. Especially as we reflect on the excellent career life of Dame Julie Andrews. For fans, she could be the perfect nanny, nun, silver screen idol, queen, LGBT concept friend, Broadway star, or just the TV legend that everyone wants to be like. But how that translates in her personal life is a different ballgame that her admirers are still trying to understand. Make sure to watch the video until the end, and if you are new here, don't forget to join our wonderful community by subscribing to the Vintage Hollywood Archive channel. Just recently, I came across stories about Julie Andrew and her great personality within the entertainment circle. And instantly, I remembered something about her uniqueness in each of the roles she played. Her genre of films is not the type that I would sit down to watch on a normal day, but there's something about her character in movies that attracted me, and each time I hear something about her, it seems that the memory is always revisited. If only I could turn back the hands of time. Every time we talk about Hollywood heroes and heroines, I'm particularly interested in living legends like Julie Andrews, the musical icon that symbolizes feminine elegance. Some say she's Hollywood's honey. Unfortunately, she also has a surprisingly dark past, or should say unfortunate issues that characterized her private life that very much contradict the pure and endowed talent that we know on screen. Julie Andrews is one of the few ladies in Hollywood that created a career identity for themselves. With her stylish outlook and hard-hearted acting ability, fans fell in love. Remarkably, her nun turned nanny and changing to Mother Maria von Trapp as seen in The Sound of Music. Julie was seen as a big mouth of a woman in Mary Poppins. Critics say she practically stole the show and thrilled her audiences with beautiful performances. Her dynamism in each of the roles she played speaks volumes of her talented persona. Maybe something is still lacking about her, but I'm not sure what it is, so I decided to dig deeper into her affairs. From Julie Andrews' classic films to her recent show in the Princess Diary series, this great lady did not just merit her Oscar and other remarkable recognitions. There has never been a dull moment in the way she entertained fans. For over 50 years of her active career, she radiated what analysts described as warmth and cheerfulness on screen. Sadly, many of us never knew that her real life was not as happy as possible, not with the few jaw-dropping tales that are emerging about her. This great beauty, even in her old age, still exudes the graceful charm that she is known for in those years of active service. Observers say Andrew still draws the same crowd of enthusiasts anywhere she appears in public space. Julie Andrews' marriage to a famous Hollywood producer, Blake Edwards, is remarkable even as she told fans that he made her bypass the known harassment that most Hollywood actresses had to face in the industry. Why? Because men, she said, were afraid of her husband. When recently, she revealed her past through her memoir, Homework, a memoir of my Hollywood years, a lot of fans, including myself, kept our mouths open in awe about a few things that caught our fancy. We did not know that we have not heard it all until Andrew released another, this time co-authoring with her lovely daughter, Emma Walton Hamilton, and narrating the extent she went in the entertainment industry. Dame Julie Andrews, DBE, born Julia Elizabeth Wells in 1935, is an English actress and vocalist. As you may have guessed, she is among the last traces of Golden Age Hollywood characters that are still alive, hale and hearty. Just like many of her kind, Andrews began as a child actress and singer, as seen in the West End in 1948, but let's take a look at things that preceded her appearance in the entertainment industry. Back in England, Andrew's birth was shrouded in mystery, but she is the daughter of Barbara Wells, her mother, and Edward Wells, a craft teacher. Her childhood began on a wrong footing because Andrews did not know her true father until she was a teenager. And thereafter, the information even remained a secret till much later in her life. It was revealed through her 2008 memoir, The Dark Secret That Remained a Secret for a Time Too Long. She realized that the name Andrews was not her birth name, but was given to by her stepfather, Ted Andrews, but there wasn't much she could do at the time, so she continued with the name. 
Growing up was not much fun for young Andrew, not when her mother divorced her father and married another during the war years. Survival for Andrews means eating and hoping that things get better. Andrews lived briefly with her relatives until she was sent to stay with her mother and stepfather. But life was not different for intelligent Andrews, though it was not much better than her very poor family that lived in a bad slum part of London. Recalling her ordeal as a child, Andrews wrote that the war was a black period in her life. From frying pan to fire, she was lucky to survive the antics of a violent and alcoholic stepfather. Did she say twice while drunk he tried to take her to bed? That was how pathetic it was, but she devised her defense and was able to pull through. After acquiring singing lessons facilitated by her stepfather, she began to think differently about her troubles. I was learning on my feet, every inch of it, Andrew stated, recalling how she started. Her background is vaudeville and musicals, as seen in the early years with her somewhat mutant voice that she maneuvered to get to her dreams. According to Andrews, that got me by for a long time, and I was so lucky to be asked to go to Broadway. That was it. She made a swift move that she described as miraculous. Andrew made her first film appearance at 15 years. It happened long before those two famous outings that majorly defined her career. But she made her Broadway debut in 1954's The Boyfriend. Working as Britain's youngest prima donna, Andrews gained prominence starring in epic Broadway musical My Fair Lady in 1956, appearing as Elizabeth Doolittle. Young Andrews was opportune to showcase her pipes the year she played Princess Zella in The Singing Princess. There is one woman Andrews would never forget for her contribution to her musical career identified as a concert soprano, Madame Lillian Stiles Allen. Her mentorship influence on her, she said, is the reason she became who she is today. For the same reason, she considers Stiles Allen a third mother, since the position of birth mother and stepmother was already taken. On her part, Stiles Allen wrote a book about Andrews. In that memoir, she referred to Andrews as Julie Andrews, my star pupil, while also eulogizing Andrews' wonderful vocal collection and sense of pitch. While she noted that Andrews' range, accuracy, and tone of voice amazed her, Styles Allen praised Andrews for the rare gift of absolute pitch. But Andrews thought her words were mere play on words to make her happy because it was not the truth. She drew her attention to how, in her words, Madame was sure that I could do Mozart and Rossini, but I never was. It was Walt Disney who had asked her if she preferred to work in Hollywood. Of course, that sounded like a dream come true, though it was unexpected. She took every opportunity as it came. Somehow, Andrew's career fame kick-started with Mary Poppins after she was ignored by Jack Warner for more lucrative Audrey Hepburn in the movie version of My Fair Lady. After taking home an Oscar from the Mary Poppins movie, she went on with another powerful performance in 1966 for her role as Maria Von Trapp in The Sound of Music. Everything was working in her favor as she left behind her ugly past to follow her dreams. She never wanted anything to remind her of those ugly beginnings, so she rejected her biological father's request to get a reunion with her. And her decision on that was final. It was, however, a shock for her when he suddenly appeared at an after-party for My Fair Lady. In total displeasure, Andrews felt unimpressed by his careless attitude in the attempt to spoil her special moment. Thereafter, she never saw him again, except for irregular festive cards from her father. While Andrew was growing in popularity career-wise, her marriage was decomposing, leading to a tough divorce. Within the period, Andrews and Tony Walton were emotionally disintegrated just as they were physically apart, owing to Andrews' constant schedule with movies one after the other in various locations. They tried all they could to amend the impending divorce and save their marriage, but sadly, divorce in 1967 appeared to be the only way out of that quagmire. Walton was Julie Andrews' childhood darling. The two were into each other at her tender age. Cutie Andrews was 12 when she played an egg in the Christmas drama of Humpty Dumpty. Walton was smitten by the young beauty after watching her form her sitting position. It was not just love at first sight, but teenage chemistry that soon bind them together in friendship. After riding on a train together back home, her beauty continued tormenting Walton as he continued visiting her. Their friendship ended in matrimony that was cemented in 1959. 
Walton was deeply in love with Andrews and was said to have even designed her wedding rings to match a gold ornament that he trusted to her on D-Day. The blissful couple had a daughter, Emma. Walton was also assisting his lovely wife on set, designing the set for that all-important Mary Poppins. They were a lovely couple at the time, I must say, but Hollywood with all the hullabaloos was eventually going to destroy that joint as customary with the entertainment arena. The intricacies of her role and engagement with the productions affected her husband so much that Walton found himself not just neglected, but begging for attention. In a quote attributed to him, Walton had said, I'll tell you what, love. Check into another hotel. We'll be able to talk. Though she lost a friend and lover, the two managed to remain pals. Recall that Andrews, Walton, and Emma, their daughter, recently embarked on creative publishing. They had been co-writing children's book series and since then have created over 30 books credited to the trio. Emma once informed Andrews that writing is a fresh way to use her voice since she could no longer sing. After the divorce, Andrews found a fresh way out of the heartbreak. Because the lack of companion was just for a brief period before she moved on with her life. It is within this period that she met a man that she later spent more than 40 years in marriage with, the Breakfast at Tiffany's producer, Blake Edwards. Their marriage happened in November 1969, after which Andrews accepted Blake's two kids from his previous relationship into her family. Living with Blake was like living with the most charismatic and, and interesting companion you could meet. He was hilariously funny, with a dark sense of humor that I loved so much. Though it was not rosy for Andrews, Blake, she said often, appeared very depressed, probably battled difficult times that were not very obvious. To cut a long story short, the duo loved each other and remained married all through his demise. The couple worked together on several productions as seen in 10, SOB, and That's Life. It seemed that Edwards became uneasy about Andrews' role depicting famously cheerful protagonists, which characterized her film career. That 1981, the usually hearty Andrews shocked fans with her scandalous outing in SOB, even though the movie was written and directed by Blake Edwards. Was it that repulsive? Did they say she wanted to appear as a fed-up wife of a Hollywood director? What was the issue? Andrews exposed her breasts in the movie. And when the media asked her about the audacious flick, Andrews made light of the situation by jokingly saying that the film took 10 years to appear on the silver screen, so they had all the years to decide about her action. Andrews said she cherishes the musicals, including one with her husband titled Victor slash Victoria. That project remained her most pleasurable production. I loved doing that film, but the movie musicals were the most enjoyable of all, she declared after watching a clip of her performance with a crowd of fans. Andrews said she was focused on what she did so she could give joy and make people curious, which she thought to be one of the best qualities anyone can have in life, the reason she would not mind adding that as her major legacy. In 1998, Andrews went through a throat surgery that left her a different person because her voice was no longer what her fans used to know. Shortly after the procedure, her husband announced that she might not be able to sing again. Luckily for her, it was the opposite as she recovered, though not as before. However, the medical doctor responsible for that procedure was later sued for misconduct. Quite a sad story and a wrong way to retire this great diva. Julie Andrews and her partner and husband would later separate naturally when Blake was diagnosed with a deadly cause of pneumonia and soon gave up the ghost in a California hospital. To date, Andrews still struggles to come to terms with the fact that he is no longer with her. In a recent interview, she hinted how some days she just felt fine, but other times she suddenly wishes he was here with her. Julie Andrew is a considerate fellow and a team player. I still recall how she nearly won an award for Victor slash Victoria in 1996, but she turned down the Tony Award nomination as a way of protest. She decided to withdraw her nomination as a way of expressing her distaste for the negligence other casts in the production encountered, mainly because she thought the judges were unjust by only nominating her and not recognizing a single cast or crew member of the film. A bold step and a generous decision that further endeared classy, kind, and glamorous Dame Julie Andrews to her teeming fans. Julie Andrews' life has not been as rosy as her roles on the silver screen, but others have also had secrets about their past.
The Hidden Struggles of Hollywood Icon Robert Redford. 